evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 1st, 2014 Board of Ed meeting. Before this, uh, the board was in executive session at six o'clock to discuss potential litigation for the district, a, con a contractual matter, and an individual personnel issue. Um, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you want to do introductions? Joanne Cunningham, Kristen Beck, Jody Monroe, Tom Douglas, Brittany Barrett, Michael Cooper, Matt Downey, Diane Stever, Charmaine Widgesinger, and Judy. I'd like to start off the meeting just by um, giving the oath of office to our three new board members. And I would like to start with Christine Beck. The duties of the office of member of the Board of Education. Of member of the Board of Education. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Do <it> again. <laughs> Joanne Cunningham. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And the Constitution. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will that I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Of member of the Board of Education. Of member of the Board of Education. Thank you. And last but not least, Matt. <laughs> I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the State of New York. Of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. The duties of office. The duties of office. Of the member of the Board of Education. The member of Board of Education. Also, at this time, we're going to do an oath of office for the superintendent of schools. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. The duties of office. The duties of office. Of superintendent, superintendent of schools. Of superintendent of schools. So good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, at this time, I'd like to open up the floor for nominations for the office of board president. I'd like to nominate Matt Downey for board president. I'll second. Okay. Do you accept that? I do accept that nomination. So first, first, first and second. second, sorry. Do I have any other nominations? Do I need to do a point? I move to close the nominations. Thank you. Um, and do I have? Um, second. Oh, I just. Second. <laughs> Thank you. So. All those in favor? All those in favor, aye. say aye. 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 Those opposed, any abstentions? That carries, um, and Mr. Matthew Downey is declared president of the board by acclamation. Congratulations. I'm going to pass this baton. <laughs> Uh, okay. Do 
Do I have to take an oath as a newly elected? Yes. Yeah, does he take an okay. oath first? Yeah, I have to take an oath, Brittany. We want to make it official. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. The duties of office. The duties of office. Of board president. Of board president. Of the board of education. <laughs> the board of education. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. At this time, do we have uh, nominations for vice president? I'd like to nominate Charmaine Wischersinger for vice president. The first. I'll second. Second. Okay. Um, I would nominate Mike Cooper for vice president. I'll second. Okay. Any other nominations? At this time, nominations are closed. Do I need a second for that? I'll move to, close. I'll move to close the nominations. I'll second. Second. Okay. Um, and how do we do it? Just. Okay. So, okay. Um, Charmaine and Mike, uh, if you would like to have a a few minutes to say whatever you'd like to then. Well, as I think most everybody knows, I've served as vice president for the past year, and I feel I've grown in the role. It's, it's a learning curve, but uh, I think I've done a pretty good job this year uh, serving as a backup for Matt, and I think Matt and I work very well together. Uh, part of my job, I think, is to be a sounding board for him, and so we have many discussions about board issues, and uh, I also think this job is well-suited to my skill set, and temperamentally, I think I'm well-suited to the job, and I would be honored to continue for another year in the position. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I've served as a member of the Board of Education for five years. As I've entered my, as I enter my sixth year on the board um, and final year of my current term, um, I would like the opportunity to serve um, in uh, officer position and to have the opportunity to um, work with, advise, be a sounding board, um, have a kind of relation with Mr. Downey that he and I work out. I, I don't know what he would expect or need from a vice president because I've never been a vice president, but I would look forward to um, working that out with him and with Dr. Douglas. Um, I think over the past year, I've um, continued to grow as a board member. I've sought out additional opportunities. <coughs> I've gone to the advocacy night. I went to the legislative uh, day, um, things I hadn't done before. I presented at the NISPA conference on issues of social justice. Um, and that was a very interesting experience for me. I know that some board members came up to me and said, we never talk about social justice at our board table, and yet we know the issues are there. And um, so I gave them some tips on how to, how to do that and how to bring it into the discussion without um, being disruptive to the board's function. Um, I, I feel like um, I need to say I'm not running in opposition to Mr. Cooper, um, or uh, my running or putting my name into the, um, the ring is not an indication that I'm unhappy at all with his performance as vice president. Um, I just know that in order to um, have the opportunity to be vice president during this term, and I don't know what I'm going to do next year, someone actually asked me the night of the election if I was running in a year. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I haven't made that decision. Um, I do know that before I leave the board, whether it's next year or in the future, I would like the opportunity to try to serve the president, the superintendent, and the board uh, in an advisory capacity. I do have a number of skills that I believe could be helpful to the president. Um, in a prior position, I flew around the country and did board development and board retreats. Um, I am, a, I believe, a very skilled writer and editor. Um, but I also, I think, am a listener. And what I've said to some of the board members is I really do get my role as a board member, and I, I believe I get the role of the vice president um, to really support the president, um, to give him or her advice, um, and to be a sounding board and listener. I think, I, I definitely believe in consistency of leadership on the board, and I, since I've served on the board, every president has served for two years. Um, and I think that's a great way to maintain um, leadership at the helm during trying and not so trying times. 
Um, each of these positions has a one-year term. And what I like about the vice president's um, position is it allows the board to have the consistency at the top while rotating in the skills and interests of other board members. Um, and I believe by running for the board um, vice president position, I would bring um, perhaps different skills, perhaps the same as Mr. Cooper. Um, I think a different perspective because I fundamentally believe our perspective is shaped by the shoes we walk in. And I want, um, and the other thing I will say, and I, I'm taking a risk here, is I believe that the leadership position is a representative of our community and of the board. Um, and when the leadership stands, they're representing our community and our board. And this past year, we have a, had a certain representation up there. Um, I believe by having someone else serve as a vice president, that representative representation can change and perhaps should change to reflect the, the, the diversity within our community. So um, that's why I'm running. I value uh, Ms. Giacconi Stevers and I appreciate her nomination and I would value your vote. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go alphabetically. All in favor of Mike Cooper? All in favor of Charmaine? Two, four. Charmaine wins. Congratulations, Charmaine. Thank you. Um, do I administer the oath or do you administer the oath? She administers, she administers the oath. She okay. Administers. Uh, Charmaine? Thank you. I would just like to personally thank all the board members for, for supporting me and for the past year and as my, as in my role as president and thank you for your continued support as president and I would like to thank Mike um, for his hard work and dedication throughout the past year as serving as the vice president and I welcome working with Charmaine this coming year. Uh, next on the agenda is item five, the selection of board of education representatives. Um, and just uh, for Christine and um, Joanne's benefit, because I'm not sure if they've been through this before, we have several standing committees and we ask that um, board members um, volunteer to serve on those. We cannot have any more than three representatives on the committee, otherwise we'd have a quorum at some of those meetings. So we look usually for two to three representatives on each of the committee. Um, sometimes we talk about it um, prior to our first meeting, but I don't think anyone has this year. So um, the first one is the BCTA Process Committee. It's the Bethlehem Central Teachers Association. It's a committee made up of representatives from the teachers union, the administration, and board members that may talk, meet uh, anywhere from two to three, four times a year to discuss any type of issues that uh, may arise. Um, so who, who would be interested in serving on the BCTA Process Committee? Mike? Joanne? And, um, yep, Christine. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next is the BCEAU process committee. Uh, just like the BCTA, it is the um, support staff union uh, committee. Who would be interested in serving on that? Yep, three. It's the other three. Three of us that aren't on the BCEAU. Oh, okay. <laughs> What if I wanted to be on it? <laughs> You're ex officio on all of them? All of them? Oh, okay. Well, no, not real. In, in that case, um, so there isn't a quorum. You would, if someone couldn't make a meeting, then you could go. You would, you okay. Would but he could show to all of them, just not be. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. or yeah, participate. No, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And I have done that in the past. Next is the audit committee. Uh, that, that committee. Um, um, gets a report from our public accounting firm that does our annual audit, financial statement audit, and our single audit, and also works with our internal 
um, audit done by Questar, uh, who would be interested in serving on the audit committee. I'll stay on the bench. Okay. I was hoping Christine would waver. Okay. So the three of you. Okay. Thank goodness. Uh, next is the policy committee. Mike Charmaine. Yeah, the three of them are there. Like a lot about if you're interested. Oh no, you can serve. You, you, yeah. Well, I don't mind doing policy. Yeah. I mean, I could do policy, but I thought Christine might. So, whose policy, Mike, Charmaine? C W. Uh, do we need three or do you two? You could have two on the policy. Right, we could have two on the policy. Or do we want It all three? comes to the board anyway. So. Right, right. It's so. Mike and I have been for years. I've lost Russell, yep. the same. Okay. Um, next is the health insurance committee. Can you describe the function of this committee? I'll leave that <laughs> to Judy because she's the, the best one to deal with it. It has, it hasn't met recently, but. No, it has yeah. not met. Um, although I envision it will be a little more active this year, um, we may want to have conversations so that everybody is aware of the impacts of the Affordable Care Act requirements as that comes into play. Um, if we look at any other alternative benefit structures, um, for instance, through CASHIC right now, we're exploring the creation of an Article 47 um, funding arrangement for the prescription drug component of the plan. So those types of changes is something that goes before the committee. You have representatives from all of the bargaining units and you discuss the pros and the cons and you work to build consensus on which direction you should be moving in. So um, there will likely be maybe two meetings in this coming year. Interested? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would do that one again too. Um, I'd be interested in serving on that one too as a regular member. And uh, last on the uh, Standing Committee's Facilities and Grounds Committee. And this committee, I mean, I haven't had full discussions with uh, uh, Dr. Douglas, but I would expect with the construction going on that the, this committee might become a lot more active, um, maybe look at the change orders and different things that would be happening through the next two years, so. This would probably have to have a monthly commitment uh, just because it would involve Greg uh, as well as myself because a lot of things are going to happen especially in the next two months that it just depends so I'll do that Mike? I'd be willing to serve if you need three but uh, unless okay. someone else wants is interested uh, no if you want to do it yeah. okay Mike Cooper Diane, Diane Stevens CW okay okay, okay. Diane Mike and Charmaine. 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 Okay. I know, like last year, can we make sure some of these meetings happen? Because I know we really didn't have, yeah, did we have any with the process committees for BCTA or BCUEA? No. Again, the purpose yeah. is if, the, if there's if there was no issue. Yeah. Right. 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 But in right. previous years, we did. We even would meet anyways, just if somebody just, right, right, there was right. no pressing issues, just for people to kind of. Yeah. Right. Interact. You know, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you only have two for policy? Um, yes, like two. Policy. Okay. Do you want to be honest? Christine would be on policy. Oh. All right. Good. So I'll be in the minutes. Hmm? So I'll be in the minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that. Moving on to item six, appointment of officers. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following appointment of officers action items A through H. So moved. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? Just a question. Mm -hmm. um, does Phyllis Albano ever come to board meetings? She has. She has? Mm -hmm. Okay. She has sometimes. Uh, Just, uh, she, she'll be at, she's at the audit committee meetings. Okay, so yeah. I'll, I'll meet her in person yeah. then. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I see her name obviously on all of the, you know, financial information and just wonder who she is and yep. look forward to meeting her. Uh, yeah. well, I think Tom is going to set up an orientation with yes. you and Christine to you know, oh, okay. visit all the departments and principals. So and that's whatever. the part I haven't done yet? Yeah, that's the part. Okay. <laughs> In each of the departments as well as each of the buildings will do an orientation. 
either individually or preferably together, right. but I don't know if your calendars will allow that, but we'll try to do that over the next month, month okay. and a half. Great. And one item on here I, I think we should make special mention of, I know it was in the spotlight too, is in item number C, tax collector. Um, Michelle is usually appointed just for the town of New Scotland. The town of Bethlehem has handled that in the uh, previous years for us. We have decided to handle that on our own and go through BOCES, uh, which will actually be a, a savings for us. Yes, and the town actually was happy, I think, to, to get rid of that responsibility. And we'll make sure that all that information is communicated out, communicated out to the taxpayers uh, so they know that the tax bills will be sent in. And there'll be um, two banks, I believe, that they can deposit. One two locations. One, two branches. Which is, OK. And with evening hours, that should make it more convenient for anybody who chooses to pay in person as opposed to mailing it into the district's P.O. box. Yeah. In addition, and we have a draft letter that we were working on today to start announcing. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. okay. And I know and Ravina Queeman, Selkirk is also doing and yes. opting out also yeah. for the town. To make it clear that they make their checks to the Bethlehem Central School District. Mm -hmm. Right. But to the town of Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> want to make sure those checks are yeah. so. um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number seven, other appointments. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following appointment action items A through F. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? Um, I do have one quick question on item B. I know we're appointing Sal, and we have for the past couple of years, mm -hmm. but previously at, um, it had been the superintendent. Was it yeah, reason we one of the one of the things that we changed a couple of years ago. The superintendent can be ultimately the the appeal to any hearing officer, and so what happens is you try to make sure there's a clear distinction between those two. So we have two Title IX compliance officers one which will be male and one which will be female and those will handle each um, situation independently as well as gender specific and then any questions also have an appeal process all the way up through the superintendent because okay. one is listed as a coordinator and one is compliance officer well that that compliance officer uh, and coordinator let me see because the compliance officer on 504 would be Kathy. Yeah. Right? And, and that's how it's listed. What I would say is SAIL wouldn't have any Section 504 coordination. So I'd, I'd say that's an error on our part if we can strike those three words at the end. So he would be a Title IX um, coordinator. And we'll strike the Section 504. OK. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number eight, designation. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following designation action items A through C. So moved. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number nine, authorizations. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following authorization action items A through F. That's a first? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 10, bonding of personnel. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following appointment of <coughs> bonding of personnel action items A through C. So moved. It's a first? Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Those amounts are enough, right, Judy? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 11, other items. It is recommended that the Board of, Ed, Board of Education approve the following policy action items A through B. So moved. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? Discussion. Yes. Um, just a question. Is the, are these, the code of conduct, I thought that was for the first reading or, I mean, is this the approval of the actual policy? This is the approval of the actual policy. Okay. You're required to you're required to approve it once each year. It doesn't mean that you can't make amendments or okay. changes throughout the okay. year. Okay, and I did note that there were some changes, although um, I assume everything is in there and the reason it's so lengthy and ornate is because it's complying with either federal or state regs. Mostly with the state's Project okay. Save legislation from what, okay. 10, 12 years ago or so? Even longer, yeah. 2002. Okay, it's yeah. really and then, ridiculously and then I would also long. Say, I, know, I don't know if Mike would also um, speak, but I believe we, 
there's a significant section on procedures, and I believe it gives students and parents, the reason there's so much detail is it gives people enough information to understand how things proceed um, should there be a violation. Uh, so no, no, it's understood. It's not like anything in there you would argue right, with right, it right. being in there because it's so ornate, it sort of covers the waterfront. But, you know, a code of conduct policy that's 31 pages long is pretty ornate. A lot of that is because of the safe yeah. legislation yeah. and the regulations required by New York State. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I, I figured as much, but something that lengthy also defeats the purpose of, of, in, in, of Reading encouraging it. Oh. people <laughs> to read it and it really loses meaning on a lot of levels when something is this yeah. um, like kind of weighty. We, we do yeah. have in the handbook, so it's yeah. a summary of right. it. Right. So one, one of the right. regulations sure. requires that you must have the full code available okay. on your websites, but you also must uh, do an abridged version <laughs> and synopsis uh, that must be sent out right. in one form or another to each student each year. Right. No, it's We've put in a lot of work over the last couple of years setting up the hierarchy of the layout so that hopefully it's easier to get through yeah. than the old version. Um, and the problem with the code of conduct is that you need a certain level of specificity, but at the same time you also want to keep it somewhat general because you can't obviously cover the, you can't do every grain of sand on the waterfront. Um, so you just try to do the major dunes. Right. <laughs> and, and well, it's pretty, it's pretty inclusive of the waterfront. <laughs> You're making me want to go to the beach right now. Yeah. No, it really is. I mean, it also yeah. does, I mean, it's an important document. There's yes. a lot of stuff in here, a lot of very important um, gives language, a lot of guidance. A lot of guidance, but I also think that um, probably the only people that will read it, maybe the audience today, because I'm pointing it out and ma making such a big deal about it, but the only people that are ever going to read this are Us. board members and maybe some administrators. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it probably argues for, for the abridged version being having a lot more emphasis placed on that because that's probably the, you know, going to be the hallmark of code of conduct for the district so well the administrators really need the full version so they're, no, follow, no, I, they're following it a little no, bit I, but I, for parents and for yeah students, no i get it it's the just, version. most yeah. of them will only go to it once they're impacted by it and right. then try to search right. through it yes correct me if i'm wrong but there are certain sections with the a through z that you can click on and you might not get the full code of conduct but you'll get little bits and pieces of it in certain, on the website on the website okay. um, no, you I get think the whole on the website code. it pulls yeah, up the, the whole thing. thing. Okay. Yeah. No, very comprehensive. Yeah. yeah. And, and I believe I wanted to know so much a little fun. bit about it. <laughs> and that ha has been reviewed by our attorneys too, right, I believe? Uh, the that? initial onset. There's, there's yeah. nothing that's a major change. structural change. Yeah. A lot of yeah. the changes in this is actually making it so it's more eye-appealing that it's an outline form that you can flow through it much easier versus there was some duplication of language just right. because the document kept growing. Uh, right. I think we the, shaved a page if off. There had been of it. changes. <laughs> we would have had to have a public yeah. hearing at the beginning of this meeting. If yeah. There had been actual yeah. substance, substance change. Change. What, change. What I might suggest for the policy committee is, oftentimes we don't start the review of the code till after, till we're almost on top of the meeting where we have to approve it. So if we perhaps um, could push that forward a bit, I know we might be getting into budget time, but I know that we're always pressed. And I'm sure there'd be feedback. There's, I'm sure, st still some duplication, some ways of tightening up. But it's hard to do that with one or two meetings when we're also reviewing other policies. So perhaps for next year, if we could move that up, maybe even a month, I would suggest so that we yeah, really, yeah. even though there may not be significant substance changes, we're always going to find something. Right. I, I just asked Brittany to put it on the calendar right. for me. And, and I would just repeat again, you know, for especially for our TV audience, if they need some interesting reading over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> the policy, whole policy manual, including the code of conduct, is on the website, so you know it is available to everyone. To look at. There are students reading it because I was on the board of examiners for the lab <coughs> school, and we had an interesting discussion on search and seizure. And the student was quoting the code um, and giving her perspective on what should or should not be allowed before the Supreme Court decision just came down. Hmm. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? That carries. Item number 12, approval of minutes. Uh, the minutes of the June 18th, 2014 regular board meeting. So moved. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? <coughs> that carries. Item 13, student senate. I, is there a student senate representative here tonight? I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're not. They're not here. Lucky <laughs> them. Um, next would be the um, superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, President Downey. We have a, a couple things that we need to discuss, but first and foremost, I want to congratulate uh, you know our entire faculty and staff as the 2013-14 school year came to a close. You know, by giving their best every day for the district, uh, the district has made great strides towards our goals as educators. And we all know that this says a lot about the individuals that were involved throughout our educational process over the past year as they overcame several obstacles that have been thrown in their way uh, as we adjust to them, namely being Common Core, our funding problems, and also adjusting to our uh, annual professional performance review process, which I think we have a pretty good relationship, although uh, the state is saying that we're testing more even though we're one of the districts testing less. So we got that notification today. But I want to thank the faculty and staff, the administration, uh, the parents and the students for an outstanding year. Uh, in related news, uh, just as uh, we came in on Thursday of last week in the Albany Business Review, which I don't understand a little because uh, they have just released a school report for 2014 naming Bethlehem Central School District as the capital region's number one school district in Albany County. Uh, this ranking is a direct result of the dedication and passion of each of our individuals uh, within the district as well as throughout the district as on behalf of our community. Uh, I thank the students and staff for their great work, uh, again, on behalf of myself as well as the Board of Education. I think they really take the pride in, in these awards and uh, commendations from our community. The reason why I say I don't understand it is because for the past three years, we have been the number one in upstate in the capital region. But in the Albany Business Review, we've gone one, two, we've gone one, one, two, one. But yet, they're run by the same company. So I don't understand that totally. So we're going to try to get that determination, but always being on top is one of the great things that we try to maintain, and I think everybody should be proud of that. Uh, one of the additional things is last Friday we had graduation. Obviously, we had beautiful weather, uh, and you know it was a wonderful way to celebrate the end of the year at SEPQ Center. Uh, and you know my congratulations to class of 2014. Not too many beach balls. Wonderful speeches by the students, and we had all, all in all a generally great graduation evening uh, for everyone to enjoy, as well as the aftermath of it. Um, also, tonight, although you're going to hear a presentation by Mr. Nolte, a little about our operations and maintenance updates with the capital project. The capital project is officially underway. Um, you know, everybody's starting to see that there's going to be a, a great deal of adjustment over the summer, but we'll wait for that. So we want the board to be aware as we start to gear up because there will be a lot of happenings over the next two months. Uh, in regards to one of the things that the board has been talking about over the past several months is our Chinese program. One of the things that we've been doing during my report is updating that we have been going through the search process. We've had our application. We had roughly 13 individuals that applied for the job, and we've gone through that process to the point we were hopefully culminating uh, at this week point in time, roughly about a week before the July 15th deadline that we imposed. So I want to turn it over to Ms. Monroe at this point just to update the board where we are at as we need some direction from the board. So um, as Dr. Douglas indicated, we, we started our search process. We did advertise the position as a 1.0 um, to see if that would uh, be more attractive. We did interviews. There was a committee interview that interviewed, I believe, uh, six individuals, one. Uh, then we brought some other individuals back for teaching <coughs> interviews. That's our process we typically do. Um, and unfortunately, none of those candidates we had. One um, we thought perhaps would be moving forward. Um, however, at this point, we have no um, teacher that we would recommend uh, for the Chinese position in the district. Um, so if you recall, the options we had talked about 
during the earlier discussions when we had um, them about the Chinese program was that um, we would find a way for the ninth and 10th grade students to continue and get their requirements for the advanced regents diploma. However, if we did not have a teacher, uh, we would recommend that the middle school students switch to an alternative language. We have an accelerated Spanish program um, that we would recommend students go into. However, if they want to go into French, certainly we would help them and provide them with supporting materials. Um, but that's where we stand currently. So um, the other option or the other discussion we had with the middle school is, is an online option viable? Um, there are really no programs that we can offer in Chinese that would re give the students requirements they would need to meet for four years to get their um, advanced regents requirements. It's just not a, it's not a good, op it's, it's not a possible option at this point from programs we've looked at and it's also, I don't believe, a good option for middle school students for language when the primary purpose of language is communication and an online program is not the best to learn that in. Um, so that's where we are. My recommendation is that we obviously allow the Chinese program for the ninth and 10th graders to do a, some kind of a blended learning option, perhaps an online option or some a combination of that would likely be with, um, uh, it, we would likely get an adult of, who could speak Mandarin to assist the students in some way. Um, it would not be a certified Chinese teacher at this point that we know of. We would continue to look for that um, and recommend the middle school students <coughs> switch to an alternative language. As, as the administration, you know, we've, we have worked tirelessly, and I, I commend Jody as well as Dr. Bell, uh, as well as all the other individuals that have gone out of their way to try to find potential solutions. I think the board over the past three years has been very steadfast on trying to find options. We, I mean, I, I want the community to understand this is not a student issue. This is the sheer fact that the laws, the regulations, and the applicant pool is very difficult and tenuous at best to try to find a qualified applicant. Even when we find qualified applicants, they still have to accept the position. We are at a point where we unfortunately have no other option. And although we said by July 15th, we've gone through a full search and we've had great responses. Unfortunately, some of the things that we've talked about in the board meetings, as well as at the parent meetings, is unfortunately some people, when they find out it's in Albany, it's not near their locale. Uh, when they don't have certifications, the hurdles may be too steep. Even if we were willing to take a risk at one point with someone that's certified and we end up losing that candidate for whatever reason, we can't do much more than that. And I want to commend Jody as well as Dr. Bell in that time and effort. And we don't want anyone to think that we were not trying to move as steadfastly forward with the Chinese program. We were hoping. Unfortunately, at this point, we have no other alternatives. And I would add, not just this year, um, but uh, Dr. Bell and the teachers who have interviewed administrators, over the past many years, um, hiring for a Chinese teacher has been uh, very difficult, but we've spent a lot of time trying to recruit people, trying to maintain teachers, more so than any, I mean, you know, I oversee all of the hiring for different departments, and I can say that we've spent more time on this particular one area than any other area in the yeah. past five, six years. So at this point, basically from my assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, to myself as well as our administrative team, we need final direction from the board. Our recommendation is, is that we proceed with the phase out. In the future, if the supply of teachers, not students, is there, we would be confident to come back. But at this point, unfortunately, we do not find a viable supply for the capital region. Jody, if we did a, an online option at the high school, mm -hmm. what are the costs looking like? There's a few different um, programs we've looked at. They um, usually are a per 
that right now they're listed as a per pupil expense. However, if we did, um, we may be able to negotiate the price. There's also uh, one of the programs we're looking at, which is probably one of the most viable. Um, you can purchase it either with or without <coughs> a certified teacher as part of that. We would likely um, purchase it as with a certified teacher. That way, if we have, if we're able to get someone on site who is can a, is able to speak Mandarin but is not certified, we have that certification um, covered. So that those are the factors that play into it. I, I'd say I found them anywhere from a hundred dollars per student to three hundred dollars per student. Some are by semester summer by a length of a year so it really varies um, but they're they're not um, they're not astronomical mm -hmm. I support your recommendation and I just I just hope some of our higher institutions of learning are you know taking note that maybe they should be encouraging their students to uh, major in Chinese so that there is a pool of teachers because I know there are a lot of other districts who are looking for Chinese teachers also and obviously if you're down closer to the city people have a better chance of finding somebody um, but I just hope that, that that occurs so that we can have it again in the future I, I agree I would um, accept your recommendation too and I'm, I'm just I guess as a wonder and I know that sometimes like we do professional development or sometimes um, teachers get stipends. If there's a way down the road, like our um, foreign language teachers could actually take some Chinese course, courses and you know, do a certified if we could help mm -hmm. pay that source or some type of help, right. you know, just kind of throwing it out there. Sure. I guess there's not really an option B. It's just sort of, we don't really have candidates. I mean, we have to plan for next year. And I mean, it, that's why we looked at the July 15th date. You know, I was really, really hopeful and I'm an optimist. So I was just so um, looking forward to a positive outcome to this and, and I really am disappointed. And I know Jody, you have tried very hard personally and put a lot into this effort. I do want folks to know that um, the board was there, the administration was there, and if somebody had popped up through this process um, and it looked like there were some promising folks who at the end, you know, one individual, actually the most promising individual ended up withdrawing. Um, and I think that's important for people to know that you know, there was a lifting of heaven and earth to get this done, and I really appreciate that. I do hope that we are a leader academically in this region, in the state. <clears throat> I do hope that we as a board recommit to the idea at some point in the future when there's clear, you know, or we are sensing there may be demand or a supply out there um, to revisit this because, um, you know, many, many of the comments, and we all heard them during the, you know, past few months about Chinese that, you know, students came up and talked to the board and were very, very compelling and, and um, many, many parents. And I really, really appreciated many of the comments, and I know we all did, about the fact that Chinese really does put us on the map um, academically and it does make us a leader and it gives us an edge and it gives us a little bit um, of cachet in you know other respects so I hope we as a board at some point will roll up our sleeves again and try and figure out how we bring this back to Bethlehem I support your recommendation because I honestly don't see any alternative um, we have to figure out what we're doing for the fall and figure out how we um, staff classrooms and create a path for students. So um, appreciate all that you, both of you, have done, um, as well as Dr. Bell, of course. So thank you. And, and I would reiterate all of what Joanna said. And, and it was Dr. Bell who had come back, come to the board uh, encouraging us to institute the Chinese program and, and wanted to be a leader in the district and in the capital district and you know has put every effort uh, she has and the administration has. And, 
and, and by joining, I was very hopeful, very hopeful that we would be able to continue on, but uh, you know, they had advertised widely, had received applications, and uh, unfortunately, um, it, it's got to the point where we don't have an option, again, other than the online course, which is very unfortunate. Um, Jody, how will parents and students be notified since it's now the summer? We um, will be drafting letters uh, to get out, hopefully, if not tomorrow, probably Thursday, um, letting them know of, you know, obviously each grade level is a little bit different as to what um, we would send them, which we sent them back in June or May whenever we posted the position that we would be informing them during the summer. So, um, and then we'll get the schedules together and we do have some students in the middle school who had already indicated they wanted to go to the summer enrichment program that we made available to them so there might be some students that um, will still or more we might have a few more students add to that as well we will start work on that communication tomorrow if yeah. that's what the board decides and also Jody I know at the last meeting someone had raised the issue of a conflict no matter what I believe in the high school with continuing the Chinese with you, you are working with uh, Mr. Landry on result trying to resolve that so that whoever's in right. Chinese can continue with the online right and I, still to participate. right with the with the online option or a combination of some kind of blended learning that that should reduce or eliminate that conflict for I think all of those students so hopefully they'll all be able to get into it was band and orchestra that were right, the believe, yeah. the problems can I ask one other question? Um, I know that oftentimes scheduling is a concern for parents. So if there has to be a change, let's say I was operating on the assumption my child was taking Chinese and now um, she, we'll say in this situation, is going into Spanish. My s second worry would be, well, what about the other courses? And is that going to you know, cause snafu in her entire schedule? So if there's a way you can re reassure parents that just because we're not carrying Chinese and the child is going into either French or more, more likely Spanish, that the child's overall schedule will not be totally. In the middle school, the accelerated Spanish offering will be offered when Chinese would have been offered anyhow. In the high school, it shouldn't have an impact. The only potential impact is if they change into a different language that may change when they can take their other classes if they opted for Latin, let's say. You know that's not offered at the same time perhaps when their Chinese class was so it may make a difference into what other sections they're in but it shouldn't preclude them from taking other courses yeah. there, there's potential no matter what especially in a high school schedule that there will be snacks sure and I think it's probably reassuring for middle school parents to know that you're basically swapping out one language for sure. the other in the same slot right great thank you over the last five years my son you know he participated in it and he um, we were part of uh, all the changes with the teacher and it's unfortunate that we couldn't retain and attract a qualified teacher to continue the program but I support the decision uh, do we have a motion to phase it out that's a first and a second any further discussion all in favor Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. A couple remaining things um, before just before the end, we need to talk with our calendars about a retreat date for the Board of Education between now and say the next uh, Board of Education meeting. Um, and then on top of it, um, with graduation comes also uh, a yearly program of senior um, celebration. And one of the things the board, after we get some information, the board and um, the district will need to have some further discussions on senior celebration and the incident that occurred this past uh, weekend. Just because we do not have all the details of it at this point, but there is some cause for concern that we're made aware of at this point. Other than that, that concludes my report, and I want to thank uh, the board for their discussion on the Chinese. I know this has been something that's been uh, weighing on us for the past several months. Any questions for Dr. Douglas? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. 
forgot ah, one shoot. thing. No. <laughs> I know, I know. But I also, there isn't really a place in this. Tonight we have a couple representatives from our Bethlehem Center, Central Community Foundation. I know they wanted to present something to the board. So uh, if we can give them just a couple minutes real quick. It's not on. It was. It was, it was, it was in the updates. It's in the updates, but I don't know if the donation was in. Donation. Yeah, you're going to approve it, but they wanted to just talk to the board real quick. Oh, okay. Because it would be way after grades. Yeah. Presentation. Sure. We have come here with our big check, and our big check is to award uh, $10,066 to uh, the district in support of the Classroom Innovation Grant Program. And the Classroom Innovation Grant Program is where faculty and staff can apply to the BCCF for uh, special initiatives to enhance learning within our schools. And we were very pleased to receive many wonderful applications this year and awarded 16 grants. And the total amount of that grant is $10,066.96. <laughs> so we're very pleased to award that tonight. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. I, I'm, you're asking for our names? Yeah. I'm Leslie Chu. I'm a member of the board. And I'm Marjorie Manich, a member of the board as well. Okay. Thank you. for um, teachers and administrators to do things that they couldn't do otherwise. We certainly don't have money in the budget for these items, and I just think that's wonderful. I mean, over $10,000 you raised, I mean, that, that's just great, great effort, and just wonderful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, and if we could add that the reason we're able to do this is through the support of the community. Um, the community came out in force for our two great events, the Jamboree in the fall and the Basketball Classic in March, and, um, and also supported our membership campaign very well this year. And the funds raised from that are why we're able to award these grants. Thank you very much. It's, it is, uh, the listing is you know items that really we as a district should be supporting, but because of budget cuts, we haven't been able to. And, and for you guys to step forward is great. Thank you. Board out here for a picture. Thank you. So, board report. Is that your dance? Yep. Okay. Next is Board of Education report. Um, uh, as Dr. Douglas had said, we had graduation last Friday night. Uh, I think it went very well, other than my throat getting a big <laughs> <laughs> cough in it. But, um, and also, we had the moving up ceremony Thursday morning for the eighth graders. I, I think it was wonderful. I, uh, the place was packed with the parents and grandparents and, and siblings, and um, uh, I think it's well appreciated by, um, by all of them. And uh, congratulations to the eighth graders as they move up to become freshmen here at the high school or move on wherever they're going. Uh, I, like I said in my speech, I encourage them to participate in all the various activities we have 
uh, you know, we, have, we offer them so many opportunities and I hope they take advantage of those. And again, congratulations to the class of 2014 as they graduate. And the last school celebration also was. Yes, yep. Was yep. I, I wasn't able to attend that one, but yeah. Christine was there too. Christine. It was record setting in time. <laughs> but it's, 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 you know, it, it is a nice, the group is very intimate. And, you know. It's very emotional and the kids really enjoy getting their, their speeches. So, yeah. graduating seniors. Anyone else on anything? Mike? I just wanted to personally congratulate Charmaine on her election, and I'm sure you'll do a great job. And if there's anything I can help you do in terms of getting acclimated, please let me know. Before the party at the lab school, they had to sit before the Board of Examiners. Um, I did do that for one day and appreciated the students, um, all the effort they put into their uh, both papers and presentations and the faculty uh, involvement. And it was, um, it's a wonderful opportunity to involve the community in that particular program and in the school district. So I um, appreciated that opportunity. Just yeah, Joanne. <laughs> There's a great article on Sunday's New York Times in the review section called uh, Why Teenagers Act Crazy. And it is required reading for anybody who is a parent or serves on a board. Um, it's basically, it, it walks you through the different parts of the brain development for teenagers and what parts are, um, are sort of lagging in their development or, or a little nascent in their development and why that leads to certain kinds of behaviors and so forth. Required reading, really, really fascinating. Would you say New York Times? Yeah, it's Sunday's Sunday. New York Times, the review section, Sorry. but if you okay. just look on their website, it's on the website. It's on the website and, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? The eighth grade graduation ceremony was a nice ceremony. Um, Mr. Klugman did a nice job with the moving up speech to the eighth graders, and Mr. Landrio also spoke to them about moving up to the high school, and uh, I think they enjoyed it, and the kids were acknowledged for their accomplishments. It's just a little too hot. <laughs> I didn't think it was as bad as it could have been. I don't know. <laughs> Being in a tie and a jacket, it was hot. But, um, and one other thing I'd like to mention too is um, we, we always are you know, told we should be um, um, collaborating with other municipal entities and whatnot. And one thing we're going to be doing um, this coming fall is normally we take a um, tax anticipation note and we go to a lender and borrow it. We are going to actually be going to the town and the town is going to be lending us money at a cheaper rate than we would be getting through a bank. So it, it, we're bending. they're going to earn some revenue higher than they would if they put it in a savings account, and we'll be getting a cheaper rate than if we borrowed the money from a bank. So well, no I think that's good, glad to hear of that. Of course, um, everybody should understand that each department over there is allowed, like even up to a 20% fund balance, whereas we're allowed 4%. Uh. <laughs> just, so they probably we can have give a loans Just too. think of the good thing I was trying to make. <laughs> but I, I do but appreciate this. But I think this is great. Right. Uh, I think, it, again, it's a it's a win-win. Win-win, and, and maybe it's something we can use towards the future of where we have that tax freeze and you're supposed to show um, savings and cooperation yes. and whatnot. I, I hope it yeah. will be something that we can um, we can use show to for use. Um, use we're proof. still waiting for what that tax plan is They don't know yet. It's supposed to be. They don't know. It's subject I know to approval from the Office of the State Controller, but it's a fairly nicely laid out proposal for them, so we're not anticipating any problems with that. So <clears throat> I expect you might see it becoming used more frequently by other entities. Great. Because with our, our fiscal year starting today, we don't see the revenue, the tax collections don't right. come into September, so there's always that cash flow issue. Right. Anyone else for anything? Okay, moving on. Next, we have our presentation by Greg Nolte um, on operations and maintenance update, the uh, bond construction. And if anyone hasn't driven down Van Dyke, you need to because <laughs> there is, the, the football field is no longer. Um, <laughs> but huge, huge mounds of dirt, and uh, it, the end result will be well worth it. I know they'll be, uh, you know, not being able to use that facility for the coming year, but uh, the end product I think we'll be very happy with. <coughs> Well, um, happy summer. Um, unfortunately, my uh, two-month vacation was disapproved by uh, Ms. Kehoe, so I'm going to be here. Uh, um, as Dr. Douglas said, uh, we are full steam ahead. 
uh, with the construction, uh, both inside and out. Um, a lot is planned for this summer, a uh, summer that actually is probably one of our shortest summers in uh, many, many years. Um, but um, tonight is not necessarily a, a nice fancy presentation. We'll do that next time and we'll show you pictures of all that's kind of going on, but this is more of a discussion about a couple things. So um, I'm gonna start off with the good news, okay? Um, the high school pool uh, update. Um, this was the $100,000 capital outlay um, that uh, you approved and the taxpayers approved um, this 13-14 uh, year. Um, this was basically rebuilding the structural columns in the pool area. Um, they, uh, basically the concrete footings have been poured, tiles around it, um, finishes are starting to happen. Um, painting is substantially done. Um, as you may recall, we received a very favorable bid of about $37,000. Um, we actually worked with SED to say, hey, how can we maximize and, and do more? Because uh, we have this $100,000 so we can maximize the money that we have and the aid that we're going to get next year. So basically they, they indicated that we could do some more painting of the trusses and of the ceiling, which was actually designated as part of some of the main work that we wanted to do in, 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 that, uh, in that area. So um, we actually have negotiated um, both uh, campus, our construction manager and our architect negotiated a, a change order. Uh, with uh, Bunkoff, who is our, our contractor on the job, uh, for about $43,000 uh, to do that painting work. Um, and then we also had another change order, a small change order for about $5,000 uh, because of some added uh, concrete work that we um, encountered as we dug down uh, to the existing footings um, that weren't exactly what the drawings uh, showed from probably back in the, uh, the 60s or so. So uh, basically, in all, the project is, is under budget. Um, and is just about complete. It's really an amazing transformation. Uh, you don't want to go in now because you still have a lot of paint odors in there that are getting basically sucked out, but it's going to be, it's going to be just a tremendous uh, transformation. Um, the 1415 capital outlay, which, which I'm calling phase two in the pool, is already being, uh, starting, uh, starting to be designed uh, by the architect. And um, we'll let you know and we'll, we'll keep you updated as far as that goes. Greg, on that, there's two change orders generally for last year to complete the capital outlay that had to be turned around rather quickly. Correct. Yes. Actually, I'm going to say three. There's there's one, another one for nine hundred or thousand dollars, for um, one other item, which is being um, Scott. Do you know? Um, no, no. It was. Um, as we exposed some of the steel columns um, prior to painting, um, there was some cosmetic work that had to happen so those columns would look nice because now they're exposed prior to painting. So there was some prep work with some welding that had to be done. All right, and that work to just happen. So um, that was about $1,000. So all in all, we are under, under our budget. So and that will complete according to the state education requirement the billing procedure all so that it's within the hundred thousand dollar mini project correct scope which was originally intended but we had to change it rather quickly because of the emergent conditions yes. of the cow and we won't be into this um um this period next year we're starting this process much earlier uh this year for phase two okay um the second item i wanted to talk about was the uh, for this coming bond, the change order allowance authorization process. Um, did, they have does everybody have? Okay. Um, this is a draft. A um, little bit of history. This is very similar to what we, um, the process that we used for the last uh, couple bonds here. Um, basically, we need something in place that is acceptable to everybody um, and kind of basically like different levels of authorization of work. So this way we don't hold up any, any of the construction. Um, so um, basically um, you can have uh, changes in scope and, and pay for it in two different ways. Uh, you have allowance use authorizations, okay? Within our current seven contracts that we have, we have about $200,000 worth of allowance authorization split up amongst those sevens, okay? Now that doesn't change the value of our current contracts, okay? So as we encounter something with the GC for $5,000, we can take it 
through the allowance authorization. It's not an add to that contract, and it's just it's just a one process that we have. The overhead and profits already built into it, um, so we have that process. Okay, and the same um, um, how we approve that uh, is the same as it would be for a change order, which, um, um, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, um, actually now uh, the change orders. Uh, basically, we start off where um, uh, we we ask the, the contractor that please provide us a price for blank, okay? Uh, the contractor will give us a cost proposal. We will then maybe negotiate the cost proposal. We'll talk about the hours um, to see if it's fair and this and that. And if it's accepted, um, then we'll do a change order request. Then it, cre it, then it basically is created into a, a, a change order, which is then um, brought before the board. So there, there's a, 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 a number of people looking at this. The construction managers involved, the, the, um, the architects involved, the engineers are involved, the district is involved. I'm involved in my staff, you know, throughout this whole um, process to make sure that whatever comes before you has been thoroughly reviewed and, and checked and is, is, is fair, basically. Um, <clears throat> so understanding that um, we need to keep this process going, that there is a lot going on already, and why I'm talking to you tonight, that, that we need this process in place because things move very, very quickly. The two months is a very, very short time. Uh, I think what also has hurt us um, this year is the late approval from SED because a lot of this coordination with all of these trades and, 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 and the contractors really diving into the drawings and saying, well, we can't do it this way, we have to do it that way. Um, it's, it's, we, we struggled in the past month to really get everything going so basically we can complete as much work as possible this summertime. So um, what I've also outlined here is the different levels of pre-authorization. Again, everything will come before the board, um, but these levels, um, is, is similar to what, uh, is, is exactly what we had on the last project, okay? Feel free to stop me. Greg, I, I would just have one question. On the, um, the third level up, the 20 to 29, nine, um, I would probably recommend you also have the Chief Business and Financial Officer on that. Oh, I have that too, so it's a yeah, stepping. Just a, yeah, because we want Judy to be aware of any financial impact on anything. Before I, I, I would say, by having that stepping level, uh, it, it helps to create oversight and accountability. But I'd also add, I know Judy and I have talked about this, that at uh, Greg's level, that there's also a cumulative total that we have to add that, you know, between zero and 999, yeah, that's understandable. But if you have 100 change orders for 999 and Greg approves mm -hmm. them all, there's no control. So we want to put in um, some type of cumulative. I, d I don't know what that amount should be. I would say up to 100,000 would be my first initial guess because I'm hoping we're not going to be having like 10 different change orders for $10,000 a piece. Scott, does that make relative sense? And, and talking to Mr. Boris, who is, is our uh, project manager for campus construction. Uh, no, we're un we're under right now, but I know Greg's going to give some information. <laughs> we're using a whole process where we have a, an encumbrance in place for the value of the contract as we're paying the balances, we're reducing the encumbrance. We're showing the retainage that's payable on that. So there are multiple checks and balances on the whole progress of the jobs with the variety of contracts. And I, and I, I can basically say, if anything gets to my level, it's going to be because it has to be an emergent condition. Otherwise, it's coming to the board. I mean. Right, and, and the other thing is, it, it happens during the summer. I mean, we can always have emergency board right. meeting. Right. I mean, we only need four board members with right. the approval, so. And that's where I think the facility and grounds committee mm -hmm. could help out, like even during the summer, it, depending, I can't remember. Well, you need four. four if if people are available, right. which right. all of you are question. for a quick meeting in the morning, say every two weeks or something, that might be something that will help Greg and myself mm -hmm. uh, with some of those discussions before we even get to the board stage too. 
Yeah, we are tracking costs um, daily, hourly. Um, it's just a matter of um, how much uh, and how frequently we report uh, to the board. And um, do you want five change orders um, every two weeks or ten, ten change orders once a month? You know, I think a lot of it, a lot of it's going to happen during the summertime. Um, I, I am very optimistic about the lack of change orders we're going to have. I was hoping yeah. you were going to say or none at all. <laughs> Um, I don't know how the rest of the board, I would rather have them as they occur, so every, every meeting if there's change orders, okay. mm -hmm. I right. think we that's should see them. Yeah, yeah, I that's think how we've that's done the it. Best way. Are you going to have an aggregate total, though? Uh, I think the aggregate total, I think at each level, should be no more than 100,000. Uh, I can just tell you at the third level it's 100,000, but it, unless it's an emergent condition, nothing's changing until the board approves it. I just, I don't feel comfortable sitting there and taking up to $30,000 and saying, go ahead. And I, I just don't see us getting at, to that aggregate level between meetings. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I just think you should have a safety net that says, there's a break here. It might be <coughs> a sort of a day where all of a sudden 15 change orders come in and they want to move. Guys, we can't do that. I mean, that's usually in very large projects, even though this is probably a, a small to mid-sized project for a district this size. I just think it's better to have it in writing in our process that we have a safety net there that looks out after the district's best interest too. Because we don't want people to feel like rubber stamps, but we also have to be able to work and get the best price. And sometimes by being able to make the decision and move at that point, you could potentially get a better price. And again, we know everything in the pipeline. It's not, we're not going to be surprised that one day we're going to get 15 change orders. We're going to know that those 15 yeah. change orders are being developed and, and that type of stuff. So, what, I'll, what I would also add is I'll ask Greg, any change order immediately goes on to that week's update. So at least you know what's going on. Yeah. And just on the, the back page, um, what we'll do just to, just to keep track of everything um, is uh, by contract, um, we'll give you summaries of of the general condition, uh, general contractors, and uh, what we started with, and how many change orders you've already approved, how many are pending, what we're looking for for action, um, and, and give you a, a brief uh, blurb as far as um, uh, what we're looking for for the change order that, that uh, we're looking for action on. So very similar to the process for those of you that were uh, around for the previous bond. Okay. Do we need to vote on this? Can I all of these, what's the reporting back to SED on all of these? Do you have to do that annually? Or, I mean, how does that work? Um, we, any change order um, that we create, we had actually has a, a, an SED certification right. uh, that Dr. Douglas has to sign. Okay. Uh, they all get submitted to SED. I'm not going to say that SED loses them. At least um, once. <laughs> but <laughs> we make sure that we, 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 uh, we carefully track anything that is submitted. And of course, at the end is when we submit our, our financial reports, which uh, Judy is heavily. Right. So you don't have to wait for anything to happen once you do that from then. SED takes a while to approve the change order. Once they even get it, we can go online and see when they log it in. So it's unlikely you're going to institute the change and then later on SED will say, sorry, shouldn't have done that. We, we're not going to approve that. It's very unlikely. Okay. 
it, it could happen, but it's Not usually cost. very rare, especially that's one of the reasons why we brought in a construction management okay. company uh, to take some of that risk out okay. of it. See, in any of the, the odd change orders, we will get with them beforehand to say, okay, we want to expand this project, we want to paint the trusses. Right. Is that going to be okay? Right. Is it going to be aidable? Do you have any questions with it? Right. And they've actually been pretty good with that pre-authorization. Um, uh, so this way we're not stuck just shelling it's out. It's like, like on the change orders tonight, although we didn't necessarily go through this process because of time crunch, SED already said they, they were talking to SED. Their big thing is you must get it done or at least substantially complete by June 30th. Right. Okay. So. Got it. Thanks. Anything else on the change order? Okay. Um, I would recommend, again, that, like Dr. Douglas said, maybe have a threshold at each level of anything over 100,000 mm -hmm. gets reported out. Yeah. So the gross the aggregate would be up to 100,000 at each level. level. We would take this form and we would post, we'd move it from draft to approve based on the board's recommendation. Great. Do I have a motion to approve the so so moved. Second. first and second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Okay. Um, so um, we've had uh, two days of official uh, summer construction, and we've already encountered our first big uh, uh, hiccup or bump uh, with the track uh, reconstruction. Um, uh, we recently discovered that the construction, the construction documents do not include the milling of the half-inch rubbery surface on the track. Okay, um, all it call, calls for is basically a, re a repainting of the top surface. Okay, um, the engineers are calling this a re rejuvenated track. Okay, which means uh, a lifespan of they're guessing anywhere from three to five years. Okay, um, to replace the rubber surface, to mill it up and, and give us our, our, a new half inch, gives us a lifespan of eight to 10 years or, or longer, okay? Um, I've had some preliminary conversations with the architect and I'm gonna follow up with him to find out how this slipped through the cracks, okay? Um, uh, I, I know in, in some of my meetings uh, with some of the user groups, we talked about this specifically and uh, I reported that it was going to be milled up and, and, and recoded. Okay. Um, outside of that, which which we'll, we'll we'll talk about, the point is that we did not buy. Um, it was a bid upon. You know, we didn't buy it. So um, uh, the construction manager, we've gotten some preliminary estimates, cost estimates from the site guy of about one hundred and five thousand dollars to do that. Okay, to give us this this eight to ten year lifespan. Okay. Um, we, we, we still, um, we're only day two here, we still have our, our $1.1 million contingency. Um, and um, I am op optimistic that um, we're really not going to deplete that by the end of, of the construction period. You know, I kind of look at how many unknowns and unforeseens that we have. Um, and I just don't see our exposures as, as overly large, okay? Um, Time will tell. This 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 construction season uh, will, will tell. Uh, and I am hoping to have enough contingency that maybe we can do some of the alternates um, that we did not take. Okay, so um, I wanted to make you aware of this, answer any questions, get direction because uh, unfortunately, you know, here we are, July one, our summer is you know fast upon, upon us here, and um, you know this is a very large pickle for us uh, if we want to get the track done. Are you checking other things? To Well, we had um, 90 projects that were approved by the voters, and of those, you know, everything had components to it. So um, we'll have a we have a meeting tomorrow at one o'clock. Uh, we're going to talk about this more. Um, you know, I'm I'm upset that I was told, you know, and that I expressed that to to uh, um, various people I met with. Um, uh, it happens, I, you know, we had so much oversight and observation uh, pre-bid, you know, and we, we looked at these drawings and uh, it happened, okay? So um, the point is, outside of the blame, what do we want to do as, as a district? And, and, and um, do we want to just go with a rejuvenated track or, 
you know, do we want to move forward and, 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 and put in a, 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 new, a new track? Yeah. And that should replace it in three years? I think what, we need to do the ten whatever but to the ten one year track. Of, one of the things Greg forgot to mention, um, and this just happens because he's had that conversation with me tonight. I, I will tell the board. I remember asking the same question during a board meeting, because it was presented at that time. I, I think Greg presented that it was a refurbishment of the track, and I re, I recall it because Pete DeVries was sitting right over there. And I said, no, what we said, it was a remilling and resurfacing of the track to the point Ashley was here as well. I think Scott, I think you were here, I'm not sure. But they had to go back and check into that. So I'm a little miffed at this. The good part is, and just so that you know, there is a silver lining that I think Greg forgot to mention, is that through our work in our projects and what Greg put out as alternates, which are not part of the project yet, that's hopefully part of the contingency, which he has a good estimate that we may not use that. I'm here to tell you that tonight, officially, this budget is 89, I think it's 89 to $92,000 under budget. So that's not even touching the contingency yet. So we have $92,000 because of our work with the roofer, because of our work with, I think, plumber. the plumber that this project right now with all signed contracts, all signed, uh, I think that would be a change order that I have to do for a million dollar we credit now. Yeah. back. That will be at our next board meeting. But that brings this project, except for our alternates, under budget. Uh, that of this 104, 92,000 is already accounted for in the budget. So we would have to look at the contingency for about $12,000. Uh, so I don't want the board to panic, but that was one of the discussions we had today because that's not how we, we proposed it and that's not how we look at it, but we have to deal with it. So even though it's bad news, we also have some of the news covered because of the fact that we were trying to make sure that we brought this project in. Now, our alternates, we have I think about $620,000 in alternates. We're hoping that we do not touch the contingency by about 500,000 at, at the most, because then we could virtually put into place those alternates. Uh, however, one of our alternates is whether or not we turf the field with natural sod turf. I had to say that the right way, so please forgive me. Uh, because right now we have it priced to seed. So each one of those becomes a priority item that we'll have to talk with the facilities and grounds condition committee on that because we sort of already have put into a general priority order right now from our discussions as money becomes available. I think what Greg and Scott are hoping is that by I think January or February of next year we will have a good control of our contingent items that then we can start opening up some of our alternates at that point. So I think it's being well managed as far as options, although this is a hiccup that unfortunately we have to address. Well, hopefully there aren't more hiccups. Yeah. I, I mean, from both of you, do we experience any, have we experienced anything else? Because I know our project meetings, this is the only thing that sort of ro rose to the top real quick. And it well, was mainly because well, it was major, but it was mainly because of the fact that individuals from our community also went out and started vandalizing the track to dig up certain parts of the yep. track, like the numbers and stuff for memorabilia's sake, even though we know they won't show us where the memorabilia is <laughs> at this point. We have a number of, um, they call them RFIs, requests for information that we get from contractors. They're looking for clarification on the documents, and this is how I weigh really how good our designers have done by, by the, these numbers and if there are um, any items that are unclear um, or any ones that, that were so not clear that it's going to cost us money because, well, you, you didn't tell them to do this or do that. So uh, we've been okay um, up to now uh, answering them. Um, we have uh, one that we're working on right now regarding some coping stones at um, Slingerlands, uh, which we all feel that we're rather strong on and we're meeting with the GC tomorrow to give them that view. Um, um, other than that. Um, and, and this is one of the big things, these RFIs are how, I mean, it's part of the business. This is where they, 
I don't mean this in any derogatory way to the companies that we're working with, but this is how they make their money too. If, if they can argue that something's not clear, there's always a cost to it. The job of the CM, the job of the architect, and the job of Greg is to argue whether it was clear or not, this would be a normal expectation. In other words, if you're taking off coping stones, you have to put them back. That's sort of understood. It's not just take them off and leave it there. I have a question. So um, is Ashley McGraw at all, I don't want to use the word libel, but do they contribute anything to that oversight? Given it's unclear whether this was an oversight, it sounds like it was fairly clear from the district that the, the I don't forget what the term you used, but the re retreading. retreading or the you know more expanded option was what was expected. Um, is there any um, contribution from the architect, given that the situation now was just the expectation that was the cost was based on the painting and not the? Yeah, that, that's a discussion. We'll have to have a discussion between CM, the I like it, the OACM team, okay. owner architect construction. construction manager. Manager. And what about the um, proposal or drawings or whatever that were submitted to SCD? Did they call for refurbishing or the painting? They just called for the paint. The, the drawings that were submitted to SCD is basically what the, the contractors got. So it just further, calls for a repainting of the surface, not the milling of that, that rubbery right. surface. Right. I didn't know if there was more verbiage. It might have been in some further document that we say this is what the yeah. expectation is or not. Even though in one of those documents they have to break the track, correct? Um, I, no, we were able to use existing lines that we put in in the last construction. So I believe but I that thought we, you guys said that we were going to have to break the track at one point, no matter what, to get the water line through. Yeah, I think we were able to use existing empty conduits. Okay. I don't mean to use the term break, but that would Cut. be Cut. full depth. Yeah. Yes. And again, it's, it's that rubbery mat. Structurally, okay, um, when we redid it in 2001, that was full depth, okay? So, so we went the full depth and we put in asphalt underneath it and then we put on that rubbery surface, okay? That is still sound, okay? If you look at the track, the track is true. Um, and and it's, it's, it's not structurally deficient in any way. It's, it's just this rubber that over time like anything, yeah, you know, it compacts down and uh, it needs to be replenished. There's no sponge in it anymore. So, I do remember one of the track coaches coming and talking about how many kids had shin splints. I, I remember that discussion about the. They were saying because of the hardness. Yeah. The track. Well, if you look, uh, lane track. one is lane one's a lot different than the outside lanes because it gets used. Because everybody runs in lane one. Like if you were to survey the you know, 10 schools that have had their tracks yeah. resurfaced, is it customary that you would expect that, that remailing would be part of the contract? Um, for this age, yes. And that's why you know we were all surprised that it, it was missed. Yeah, because normally what would happen is you would mill and put down mm -hmm. a track, say new, right. and then roughly about year six, year seven, seven. you yeah. would resurface. Right that would get you to, I believe, like year 12 to year 15, and then you'd have to redo it all. Right. There has been no maintenance to the track since, what, 2001, 2002, when it um, first went down? No substantial maintenance. Right. I mean, we, we fill cracks and um, patch holes and, yeah. you know, uh, that type of stuff, but not to this magnitude. And obviously, the decision was made that it needed to be milled and done, so. I, I think that's really the only option yeah. left for I us have to no do. doubt in that as an administrator. Yeah. I think we were saying that all along. Yeah. Right. So just for my peace of mind, I, I don't like coming to the board in this way at all. I'm a, a big pre-planner. I like to plan. You know, I, I like to give people enough notice. Uh, but w we are in a situation now that um, uh, if we don't have approval, then we don't get it done this summer. It's questionable whether or not we can do it in the fall time. Um, I'm not even sure about schedule. We have um, the contractor, the specialty contractor that is already committed to do both tennis courts 
and the track. Um, milling it down is, is, is not that big of a deal um, um, as far as added work goes. So he's already committed to the district. So um, I, I, I would be very cautious about waiting till next summer. Um, um, so I, it would be my recommendation that, that, that we do move now on this. Right, and I don't think we have a vote on it because technically we already have. Yeah, right. I mean, this, that's what we approved. Yep. Well, well, the we only do. vote well, we'll, we'll, the, we'll approve it with a change order. That yeah. you'll yeah. approve the change order for the purpose of remilling the track. Right. Right. If you do that tonight, we'll get the documents in line, right. and yeah. so that you know the cost will be roughly an additional twelve thousand dollars from our budget, but the full cost would be about a hundred and four, hundred and five. Do we have a motion to oh, yeah, further discussion? No, no, she oh. moved it. Oh, okay. Moved. Uh, I didn't, I'm sorry, I missed that. First and a second. Any further discussion? Oh. Just, just in terms of full disclosure, both my kids run track. Mm -hmm. Just, just somebody's. <laughs> well, uh, there are a lot of people. Yeah. I know, I just want people to know. Um, snow blowers along. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Okay. And then, Greg, if you can, within two weeks, I want a report in regards to this to me. And then I'll drop, draft that to the board, or at least by the next board meeting. I've got to get to the bottom of why this wasn't because honestly we said it I know you I even had to question you in open session because you said resurface and we had to question that point uh, so if anybody needs re recall please tell them to visit yeah. www.bcsd board of education videos past because I I don't even have to think about it I know that discussion yep. happened very clearly here Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. At this point, um, the board would recognize any visitors uh, who ha would like to address the board on any agenda items. Anyone here? No? Okay. Uh, item number 13, finance. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance action items A through J. So moved. That's a first and a second. Can I ask some questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, any discussion? Yep. Um, I just have a couple questions on the, uh, the food service report, and I know um, I think I had requested some of this data, so just as a follow-up. One was, Judy, um, the reference on the documents that you shared um, was the BCB, which is the BC blend of items, and then the FSW, food service worker. So just can you tell me exactly what that means? I, I sort of thought I knew what it meant when I saw BC Blend, but is that like a brand? BC Blend is the name of the coffee shop. So okay. the way they designate the various items is that it is sold in BC Blend. Oh, so okay. it's just a designation. It's a coffee shop item as opposed to another type of an a la carte item. Okay. Okay. So when you look on here and like, if you if you take um, say the egg sandwich as an example um, we don't I think it was on here I thought we didn't sell well there's some items where we sell a lot of them under the BC blend so that means they're being sold in the little cafe and then we don't sell hardly any of those same items F FSW, so that means they're not being sold in the other venues that they're being offered. Is that and FSW is an employee sale of the item, so that's where they're ringing up what they have purchased while they're working there. Oh, okay. okay. So that's basically, you can see the counts are relatively slight, but it okay. is tracked oh, okay. as to employee purchases, okay. and then everything else are students and okay. other staff purchases of those items. Okay. So, so that column at the end where it says adult, that shows the adults purchasing, that means that that would encompass faculty and those Correct. types of folks. Correct. And not the, the staff of the cafe or the food Correct. worker. Okay, I got it. Um, and the other thing that I, um, that's not really clear is um, what, you know, what's driving, because this is a money maker for the district, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. 
So what's not clear on here is exactly, you can see what the sales are, but you don't really know what the profit margin is. In other words, mm -hmm. you know, are we making a lot of money per egg sandwich and not so much money per, you know, another top seller bagel mm -hmm. as an example? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, coffee, quite honestly. I would assume coffee is probably a high profit margin uh, item. Some items have higher markup than other, yes. Okay. Um, so that's not on here, and that would be helpful. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make work, um, mm -hmm. but if that is available, I think that would be helpful in kind of understanding uh, why we sell certain things and why, you know, why we would like to sell certain things. Right. Um, but it was pretty clear on this um, document, you know, that that coffee is a big seller. The iced coffees, in particular, 16 ounces of the BC blend iced coffee, you know, that's, that's a powerful um, driver of the revenue of the total. Um, you know, that's kind of illustrating one of the issues that I've had, which is mm -hmm. we are selling a lot of coffee to a lot of youth, a lot of high school kids. So it's not a non-issue um, with respect to what's actually going out the door. Um, and I think personally, you know, I've raised this before, I'll raise it again. <laughs> um, I think, and especially, you know, that article I even referenced, actually one of the things that that New York Times referenced was the fact that stimulants have a very powerful effect on the youth brain. And certain parts of the youth brain that they were speaking to in the article and um, I think it's something that, you know, is a valid public health issue, quite honestly. We are selling, apparently in large numbers, um, a powerful stimulant to youth who um, don't necessarily have the capacity metabolically to process that at that level. And I would take issue with that. So thank you for the report. I know I've asked mm -hmm. for this. I appreciate the information. Anyone else? Oh, I had a question um, I, on, on different ones here. Yeah. On, on the fees for the facilities and fees yeah. for the subs and whatever, are those the same as last year? Judy, I, I just wasn't sure. Oh, the facility use fees? Yes, those are the same. same. Mm -hmm. And also the substitute rates, mm -hmm. too? Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I guess I hadn't realized that for any um, school organization, there is no facility fee. It's just they pay for um, if we need to have a custodian extra on staff custodial or extra, time, extra yes. Time. Okay. Yes. So I was thinking there were, previously there had been. There were, there's never been any fees charged to those groups. No, they yep. get to okay. use the yeah. district space. They get priority for that space. No. Mm -hmm. Those are like considered a school-based like program. Right. Yeah, PTA yeah. organizations. Yeah. I have a question. When was the last time those were assessed? That that whole rate schedule was assessed. Not not the sub rates, but the. For, the facility oh, rental. Yes. Um, just recently, as a matter of fact, we used our internal auditor to do a study of how do we compare to other districts, and he had reported back to the audit committee that, in fact, we were within range, that the structure <coughs> of the fees um, was easy enough for people to understand, but that it did a, an adequate job of raising the funds to cover the costs for those various rentals. The only other question, minimum wage, what is that now? Isn't it more than $8 an hour? There's uh, a different minimum for federal and state, so okay. our rates are in compliance with okay. Okay. where we need to be. Yeah. I'd have to look up to tell you what they are. Okay. Federal, yeah, one is, I think, like 780 but oh, okay, but we are, we are uh, in compliance. I just was thinking it was at 825 I don't know why I was thinking that. And there's phasing in. Yeah. It yeah. is increasing yeah. over yeah. time, okay. so. It depends what state yeah. you're in. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 19, uh, professional personnel has recommended that the Board of Education approve the following instructional staff action, action items A through K. So moved. That's the first and the second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just, uh, just want to recognize Linda Berry and Anne Marie Backer for the years of service um, as library media specialist. Uh, that was Linda and Anne Marie. Backer at Slingerlands, um, you know, being here for a long time, and um, appreciate their service to the district. Yes. 
especially since they probably won't be here at the end of the year next year to be recognized. Oh, yeah, the, the re retiring teachers, yeah. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 20, support personnel. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items A through I. So moved. So first. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 21, correspondence for action. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following correspondence for action items A through K. So moved. That's a first. Second. Second. Any discussion? Can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah. Um, the item J, the approval of the extension of athletic football reconditioning service contract, I tried to decipher exactly what that was in the document that accompanied this, um, this uh, board packet and was unable to figure out. <laughs> Can you just tell me what that is? The, believe yeah, the helmets, the helmets. Football football rather than buying <laughs> new helmets, they okay. rebuild them. There's, there's, so a, that certain, there's, there's a certain standards. type of safety standard that has okay. to be recertified each year. Okay. Uh, we have to send everything out. Then we have to, we have a request for proposal contract with a company. Okay. This allows that to extend so you don't have to go out, but sooner or later we'll have to go out again for a request. And it's for only for football helmets? Uh, it's for anything that we put on a student's head that would require NOXI certification. But okay. right now, that primarily is just the football helmets. Okay, like, so like softball helmets, helmets if, if they provide them themselves, they must make sure that they're certified and proved to us. Okay, so hockey helmets fall in the same category yes. as that? Okay. Lacrosse, do they wear helmets? Lacrosse. They do, yeah, boys lacrosse. The kids wear provide their own like girls softball, boys boots. baseball helmets, a lot of them wear their own personal helmet. They have to show and produce the Noxie seal on the helmet. Okay, but football, they wear district helmets? They wear district helmets, And yes. that's the only sport that we have where they wear? Currently at this point, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it was confusing because there's all kinds of reference to other school districts in there. And it's your yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I got it. Yeah. This way so we get the aid You get a higher well. volume, too, so you get lower prices on the work that's being done okay. by banding together with the others. Yeah. That's interesting because, you know, you look at a sport like hockey, high contact sport, I would argue there's probably, I don't know the data, but yeah. equal potential for concussions and so forth in hockey as in football. Yeah. Um, a, a lot yeah. of it is because the students play outside of the school environment, so they need their own personal equipment, where with football, the only thing they play outside is usually a camp and they have to check it out from us and it has to be a certified helmet. But other than that, hmm. that's, that's, that's the major issue. And because of the, the collision and impact of that right. sport directly related to our yeah. putting proper safety gear on the student. Okay. And lacrosse, too, the yeah. same reasoning? See, a lot of those, I mean, you don't have many outside football programs. Right. But you do have outside lacrosse programs, outside hockey programs. That's the best I can explain it. Okay. I, I would raise it during budget time if you feel like we should be doing something differently. We should plan ahead for it. Yeah. No, I guess my, I mean, it's a, I'm glad to know what exactly it is. Um, you know, I think that the one issue I think is worth sort of examining maybe more deeply is whether or not we're really monitoring the equipment of kids it's playing in other high contact sports like, like lacrosse, boys lacrosse, um, and hockey, obviously, could, you know, because equal, like I said, equal potential for a kid to get hurt. Um, we would want to make sure that we as a district are making sure that we're, you know, ensuring that kids are safe in all of con high contact, every sport, but no. high contact especially. You know, most of the reps are pretty good, at least in, in hockey, with if there's a violation of yeah, the neck no. guard or something. Or the but mouth in terms guard. of the helmet yeah. itself, mm -hmm. there's really no. Yeah, I've never seen a hockey guards. ref question someone's helmet yeah. ever. See, see, like in every sport's different, like as yeah. a, a baseball official, we're required to go over and say, line your helmets up and give them a pressure check. Yeah, they sure don't do no that in cracks. hockey. Yeah. So each so sport anyway. is, uh, is unique. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have a question yep. for Jody. I know we have the PDP and RTI and I love all the alphabet words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, annually, we used to um, 
approved the APPR plan too before it became associated with the Common Core Learning Standards. Now, my question is, obviously we don't have to approve that now, but no, you as a result. No, you approved it less, but it's, it's approved generally August. in September. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but will we have to modify it as a result of um, the legislation that was recently passed? Okay, we haven't heard anything about what might need to be done with, okay. We're, we're plan. I mean, uh, Jody's <laughs> being Jody's being kind because we received a wonderful letter from State Ed today saying that we need to modify our plans and telling us all the things we need to modify and do. When actually we already do that in our testing program, we think they've looked at somebody else's plan. But our our position, if possible, is that. We have something that's working right now that's in, in a much better light than we feel that the entire state is working off of, that we're hoping there won't be any major changes because state ed has been very difficult, especially with us, and we've been one of the leaders in the APPR development process. So I think Jody's position, I think the unit's position is if we do not have to make a change, we're set. Right. David, we haven't gotten any guidance on um the legislation. So okay. I yeah. know it's surprising, but <laughs> well, you find at the last minute and then say, "Well, gee, it has to be in next week." Seeing yeah, how scores are due at this date. point, you'd <laughs> think that the new legislation would have come with the guidance immediately because we have to finish our APPR. Right. You would right, think. but I'm sure State Ed right now is formulating whatever is associated with the, you know, the new laws that impact their. I'm part sure it'll be to us. We in hope. A week or so. No, I mean, uh, agencies, state agencies aren't very quick. It's awful on hard the to interpret uh, legislative intent to commissioner regulation. Uh, so that it will be interesting to see what comes out of this. And staff is limited with state app. So. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Uh, recognition of visitors at this time, if there are any visitors who would uh, like to address the board on any non-agenda item? Being none? Okay, moving on. Future meetings. Our next uh, board meeting is uh, Wednesday, August 13th, and I note that that is not a normal, um, the first or third um, Wednesday of the month. It's actually the second, right? Second Wednesday of the month that we have that, and that I believe is mainly because we need to set the tax rate yes. and all that. And by the time everything gets settled, um, we don't have it prior to that time frame. So. Did you want to and then, talk about a retreat date around? Yeah, you know and, that same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's getting well, let me just finish it. Okay. The next day <laughs> after that is is um, Wednesday, September third, a regular board meeting. Uh, again, executive session would start at six p.m. with the regular board meeting at seven p.m. and that would be. Is that the first day of school? Do they come back Wednesday or Thursday? They come, come back, back Thursday. Uh, Thursday. 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 Okay. Yeah, so we're on a night normal before. schedule. This, this so we probably won't see any pig students yeah. still. So. No. Okay. Um, retreat dates. And the retreat dates. Let's talk about dates that were available for retreats. You know, uh, one thing I do, I find it very helpful. We, we can all break out our own calendars, but I know that Brittany's doodle calendar is also another tool for us, unless we all want to go through date books. Well, we have to be there the 13th, I would like, tell if you want to do the retreat for us. Like, how many hours do we need? Um, you can do it the same night as a board meeting. No? Yeah. <laughs> no, because you'll have, you'll have a construction uh, update again. And, and you, right, you right, never right. know if there's anything else that might take us some time. Can I suggest that we do the doodle calendar yeah. because my phone battery died, so yeah. I don't have okay. access yeah. to my Can I ask, is anyone making a major vacation or not available say not next week but over the next three weeks say yeah, I, I will be out of town the thursday and friday the 24th 25th whatever that weekend is somewhere around there okay. i'm going a lot until the 30th and the 31st because i'm just this helps us to make a doodle calendar to try to and stay away i was hoping we could do something close to the board meeting date yeah. in august it would be easy not after it because i, I It'd be another conference starting the 14th, but yeah, I mean, like even that Monday or Tuesday. Orientation and right. dinner up I, there. I think I'm gone July 13th and 14th, and then again August 15th. We have administrative retreat 12th and 13th of August, so I was hoping to have it before that point. What about that first first Wednesday in August? 
Let's why don't we put the doodle calendar out? Maybe to take put, a put the doodle calendar out for yeah. the yeah. next two months, yeah. and everybody put okay. when they're available. And then, yeah. first of all, put the dates you're not on there, so we don't have to rewrite it. You know what I mean? Like if you know you can't do it on the 12th that's and 13th, that's put that there, so we don't. We'll try to look at some things and get yeah. those dates out of the way. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. We'll do that do. tomorrow and have it out to you then. Okay. And do you have access yet to the portal? I do. Okay. Yeah. Good. I think all the email groups have been updated now. Uh, I would say whatever night we have the board retreat, say it's that first night, I don't know how you feel, or August 13th, whichever one, which is dress up night. What? Because what? you need to have a new board picture taken. <laughs> no, let's do it at no. the board meeting. Do, do it at the Can board we meeting. Do it in January or something. <laughs> well, no, we'll do it. We'll do it at the August board meeting. August the, really? the 13th. Yeah, I don't want the retreat. I want to be a bit casual. I don't want to. Okay, have a that's what I figured. Then. So, <laughs> so at the 13th, yeah, that or the, the board. September, or the first one in September. Okay. Yes. But yeah. Um, are we willing to even do it at say of a Saturday or Sunday, or are we just throwing out Monday through Friday dates? No. no okay. <laughs> I just want, we have done retreat Saturday morning. Yeah, in the winter time. Yeah, one, one, of, one of my concerns would be that we may also need to use, just because of some of the things that are happening, if this is a little earlier before that time, as an opening that we may have to have some subtle board action, especially depending on the project at that point. So it would be hard, it, yeah, it, but it would be hard to do something like that with a retreat on Saturday, so as long as if we needed something else. No, I know, but just the appearance for the community. Yeah, no, we've done it before. Yeah. But in yeah. the winter, not in the summer. <laughs> I, I thought we did it a lot. We used to do the budget I'm ones. Yeah, but it was March, and, you know, not in the summer. 6 a.m. Saturday morning, what's wrong with that? No. <laughs> yeah, we could go for right, and then we go to the Y first. afterwards or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess we have a, a we're done. Did no no need to go did into you? executive yeah. session? No. Nope. All right, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. First and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>